The term bioactive substrate has been in use more frequently in the past few years by keepers of reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates, but there is still some confusion about what exactly a bioactive substrate is and how to create one. Bioactive substrates utilize bacteria, other microorganisms, fungi, microfauna, and plants to partially replicate nutrient cycles like those found in nature. They make for an attractive, more natural setup and can greatly reduce maintenance as the microfauna and plants do much of the work for you. There are several types of bioactive substrate. I will focus on two of the most common, a basic bioactive substrate and a multi-layer substrate for planted vivaria, as these are the ones I have experience with. Each type has different uses and characteristics. Number one, basic bioactive substrate. This type of substrate is popular for vivaria containing invertebrates, reptiles, and amphibians without live plants, or sometimes with plants in pots. The basic ingredient is often ground cocoa fiber. Depending on the vivarium inhabitants, it may also contain leaf litter and other additions such as sand, hickory chips, aspen shavings, and so on. Pros. It is fairly inexpensive. It works well for a variety of substrate depths. It does help maintain humidity in the vivarium. It will support microfauna, thus reducing maintenance. It can be used to hide the pots of potted plants, which improves the natural look of the vivarium in contrast to substrates such as paper towels. Cons. It has a shorter useful lifespan than a multi-layer substrate, must be augmented as it breaks down and replaced as needed. It is not a good substrate for most plants long term if they are planted directly in it. You have to rely on plants in pots. It can become packed down over time and may need to be aerated and or stirred periodically. It can become too dry or too soggy fairly easily with potentially disastrous results. So care must be taken to maintain the appropriate moisture levels without much margin for error. Number two, multi-layer bioactive substrate. This type of substrate is popular for dart frogs as well as many other species of amphibians and reptiles. It is ideal for planted vivaria. Each layer requires specific components. It starts with a drainage layer. There are a couple of options for the material used in this layer. Ideally, this will be a very lightweight, porous material. Such a material made from recycled glass is sometimes called feather light. You can learn more about it in the link in the description. Leka standing for lightweight expanded clay aggregate, is also a good option. The drainage layer holds a reservoir of water. It should never be allowed to dry out, nor should the water level be permitted to reach the rooting medium above. The next layer is a mesh or screen to prevent the top layers of substrate from trickling down into the drainage layer. Nylon window screen from the hardware store can easily be cut to fit your vivarium and works well. On top of the screen, a fairly deep rooting medium is used. Very specific ingredients are needed, as this layer must retain moisture well, yet remain unimpacted to allow good gas exchange. Plain coconut fiber or potting soil or substances like that will not work long term. A popular mixture is called ABG mix, which is short for Atlanta Botanical Gardens. Several different formulations are available. I have also had great results with the mixes from Any Herp, New England Herpetological Supply. Other reputable dart frog companies should have good mixes available as well. Next, live plants are placed in the rooting medium, and finally, it's time to add a leaf litter layer. Sanitized, non-toxic hardwood leaves such as oak and magnolia are popular choices. Pros of multi-layer substrate. It has great longevity. It can last for years before needing to be replaced. It is great for a variety of organisms, including dart frogs, as well as a variety of other tropical and subtropical creatures, and is the best medium for growing live plants in a vivarium. It allows for the most attractive, natural-looking, lowest-maintenance setup. Cons. It is more expensive and involved to set up. And now some information on microfauna. A crucial component of any bioactive substrate are the detritivores that consume the waste and uneaten food of the larger inhabitants and make them more available to plants. These small detritivores are known collectively as microfauna. The most popular and safest to use include various species of springtails and isopods. They will feast on the leaf litter layer, uneaten food, feces, and other detritus. In many cases, they also serve as a supplemental food source for the inhabitants of the vivarium. 
As long as the proper humidity is maintained in the vivarium and the leaf litter is replaced as it is consumed, the microfauna need no additional care. Microfauna flourish in a multi-layer substrate as well as a basic bioactive substrate. In summary, the substrate you choose partly depends on the species you keep. Dart frogs, for example, really ought to have a multi-layer substrate to thrive long term. Even though many geckos do fine on basic substrate, we keep most of ours on a multi-layer substrate with live plants because it looks better and requires less maintenance. On the other hand, there are many herps and invertebrates that thrive on a simple cocoa fiber based substrate. The materials are less expensive, though they need to be replaced more often, and if you keep plants in it, remember that they should remain in pots, in a suitable potting medium. Before I set up my first bioactive substrate a few years ago, I read up on substrates and vivarium construction at anyherpeticulture.com. Just to be clear, I'm not receiving any compensation to say this, I just think they provide great information and products. If you're interested in setting up a bioactive substrate, I recommend you visit their site and read their tutorials. They'll get you off to a great start.